Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We're back again with more Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. And this time, I want to continue the subclass video that I made and walk through more of the classes that are available in the game. Hope you all enjoyed the first one. Let's go ahead and just dive right in. Next up is Druid, and me personally, I like Primal Druid the most. Primal Druid is, you're going to lose access to the full list of companions and the domain that you would usually get as a Druid, but in, and instead, you only can pick between Mastodon, Smilodon, Triceratops, and Velociraptor. No big deal, they're all great choices. And then, in addition, you're going to get Primal Size, which is going to allow you to cast Enlarged Person on yourself, and at level eight, it'll start giving you a plus four size bonus to strength and constitution. Then at level 16, it's gonna give you a plus six size bonus to strength and constitution. Very, very nice stuff. I feel like this folds in very nicely with Gold Dragon because this particular class is all about um, missing the old days, missing how things used to be, missing a time when all creatures were more in harmony with nature. And I think that folds in very nicely with the, uh, the creature who allows you to go down the gold dragon path. Runner up, honestly, I prefer the base druid class over all the rest of these. I feel like as a druid, I should have an animal companion and I should be able to use wild shape. And I want subclasses that are gonna be able to help me do those things. And all the rest of the subclasses basically take away from me the one or both of those in exchange for things that I don't really feel like are really make up for what you're losing. So definitely let me know down in the comments if you all feel differently, if there's a jewelry uh, subclass here that I should be paying more attention to. But to me, Primal Druid and Regular Druid are the way to go for Regular Druid. I think Aeon fits really nicely in with the neutral stance that druids are really supposed to have. And it's gonna help you pull off some of those illusion buffs that a lot of enemies in the game use. So, good stuff. Next up is Fighter, and my personal favorite is the Aldori Defender. I love Aldori Defender because it basically, in my mind, completely switches up your play style. It is all about defense and being able to deal damage if someone tries to attack you and trying to disarm your enemies and just has you involved in a lot of things that you usually wouldn't do when playing other classes. So I think that's really, really awesome. I love the callback to the Sword Lords uh, from Kingmaker. And so that, from a role-playing standpoint, makes me want to do this class even more. I had a lot of fun putting together a build for this. Runner up for Aldori Defender is probably Two-Handed Fighter. Um, you know, fighters are really kind of more so vanilla. It's not going to have all the special bells and whistles. So if you just want to throw on some heavy armor and pick up a huge blade and just start swinging it around, I feel like this helps you do it very well. It gives you a lot of buffs and bonuses specifically revolving around using a two-handed weapon in association with power attack. And by the time you get up to level 20, you can definitely do some massive damage with this as long as you're buffed properly. Going back to Aldori Defender, as far as Mythic Pass, I would probably go with Aeon again. Just really fits with what the Aldoris are supposed to all be about and will help you pull off some of those buffs from different enemies, increasing your own personal survivability. Next up is the Hunter, and out of its subclasses, the one I like the most is Divine Hound. It basically takes the Hunter and combines it with an Inquisitor, so you get access to the Animal Companion, although it is a smaller list, so you only can pick from a dog or a wolf, but you also get access to Judgments and these judgments increase over time. And judgments basically give you the option of doing a bunch of different things, whether you wanna cause healing or increase your ability to do damage or increase your ability to pierce through enemy spell resistance. Whatever the situation calls for, you can choose a judgment that is going to assist you in that particular situation. 
Um, this is actually, I did a video of Act One Tips where I talked about respecting Lan and making him a sacred huntsman inquisitor. There are a couple of people in the comments mentioning that they feel like Divine Hound is actually the better option for him. And I think there is, I stick with my choice, but I think there definitely is something to say for that. And definitely this is a, a worthy route for you to go down. Um, runner up, I personally really like Urban Hunter. So Urban Hunter, it's also going to give you a smaller list of animal companions, but it's also going to give you Captor. At six level and every three levels thereafter, the Auburn Hunter selects a bonus feat from the list, from a specific list that will be gained by both the Hunter and your animal companion. Now, when you look at this list, it's got greater bull rush, greater dirty trick, greater trip. My understanding is, uh, for at least from what I played, you can't get a animal companions. I think it's intelligence. There's some attribute that they're very low on that it's very difficult to raise it high enough where they would have access to be able to get some of these feats. And so this becomes a nice way, like all the animals can get trip, disarm, bull rush, et cetera, et cetera. But the higher levels of them, for the most part, you can't get. And so this becomes a very nice way for you to be able to get greater trip, greater bull rush, et cetera, et cetera, which have some nice features to them along with combat reflexes, which is also very, very nice. So I think this meshes well again with Azada uh, because Azada is not only going to allow you to share teamwork feats with your team, but some of those teamwork feats specifically assist you with being able to do these combat maneuvers. And so it's going to make the overall build for this class significantly stronger and help to make up for the fact that you have to take off your teamwork feats in order to get access to these other feats. Next up is Inquisitor, my personal favorite, Monster Tactician. I personally feel like Monster Tactician is the best summoner in the game. Basically, you're going to get the summon monster abilities as you level up, but unlike other classes where there are spells, these ones will uh, stay out for a certain amount of time that I think is, it's one minute per level, as opposed to other classes where your summons will stay out one round per level. So you can essentially go through entire dungeons where you only have to cast your spell, your summons, you know, maybe uh, two or three times to get through the an entire hour long dungeon. Very, very cool stuff. All of your summons are also treated as if they know your teamwork feats. So all the teamwork feats that you get to select as you level up, it'll apply to any summons you bring out. It just all correlates to a very, very powerful build that folds very well into Aeon. Um, I feel like Aeon probably, you know, outside of Lich, has the strongest summoning base. You've noticed I haven't mentioned Aeon a bunch because I don't feel like personally it's all that great in combat. But for a summoner, Aeon has some team-wide buffs that you can do that really, really make sense in a build like this. So definitely a worthy choice. And then runner-up, one that I know is a favorite for a lot of people, is Sacred Huntsmaster. I'll be honest, I'm not as high on this class as it seems like a lot of other people are. It is nice to be able to have access to the teamwork feats, uh, you get the favorite enemy feats, you get an animal companion. It's it's uh, definitely strong, but I feel like the spell list for Inquisitor, I, I, can't, I can't stand it. It just doesn't seem useful to me compared to the other classes that you'll probably have on your team. So be because of that, the, the Sacred Huntsmaster, it just doesn't appeal to me as much, but it's got very, very strong mechanics for anybody who's interested in this particular mix of abilities. So next up is Kineticist. I haven't been able to actually roll a character and take it through multiple acts with a Kineticist. I've only went through the mechanics and put a build together. And from some of the feedback that I've gotten, the build works pretty well. Um, my favorite subclass is the one that I did the build on, which is Blood Kineticist. 
um, to a blood kinetic says the water in a creature's blood is just like any other sort. And she uses that knowledge to brutal ends. So you get rack and other abilities as you go through the game. And they're basically infusions that you can add on to your kineticist abilities that will change how it works or change the effect that it has upon enemies. It's just really cool stuff. And from a role playing perspective, I love being an evil blood mage. Uh, Tremere was always my favorite um, cl class to play when I was playing Vampire Masquerade Bloodline. And so I feel like this, this gets me closer to that while at the same time keeping a lot of the core elements of what makes Kineticist so cool. As far as what mythic path to choose, Lich is the only mythic path I'm aware of that has power specifically geared around making your Kineticist better. So obviously that's a strong choice. I'll be honest, I don't have a follow-up subclass when it comes to Kineticist. I'm so tied to Blood Kineticist, I haven't even bothered playing around with the other ones. So it, I know some of you feel very, very strongly about the Kineticist and that some of you feel very, very strongly that Blood Kineticist is not the best one. That honestly, it's much more powerful if you use the elemental versions of the Kineticist. So definitely drop a comment if you're passionate about it and let us know what you feel like is really the best subclass for people to take. Next up is Magus, and this is yet another class that I haven't had much opportunity to play around with. You do get a Magus party member in Kingmaker, but he was never a consistent part of my team. So I only got to play around with him a little bit. Out of all the subclasses here, the one I feel most passionately about is Sword Saint. Sword Saint seems to be a type of class where you choose one one-handed weapon and completely specialize in it while at the same time being able to use powers with your other hand. So it seems like it's all about using touch spells in conjunction with uh, a lot of critical attacks and proficiency with one particular weapon while pumping up your intelligence to increase your initiative, your AC, and a bunch of other awesome things for your particular class to just make yourself a very unique and very amazing fighter. And all of that appeals to me to a great degree, giving strong consideration to making Sword Saint my demon build. Um, because I want my demon to be completely self-sufficient in the event that a whole lot of people turn against him. Next up is Monk. And I gotta be honest, I avoid Monk like the plague. Has nothing to do with the class itself or anything Alcat has done with it. <laughs> it's really the Pathfinder fans who have made me decide to just avoid Monk at all costs. And that's because every time I do a freaking build, someone is telling me that I need to either dump, dip this into Monk or dip this into Vivisectionist. And it, I don't understand why everybody, everybody loves to use those two classes as a crutch. So I stay away from Monk for the most part, specifically because of that. I do have a Sela two-handed build coming out soon that will incorporate some Monk feats because I do believe from a role-playing standpoint, it fits with her. But otherwise, you haven't seen any Monk um, builds from me. The only exception of that is Zen Archer, which is Lan's uh, class. I do feel like this is a very, very strong subclass. It allows him to use his wisdom score for both defense and to hit, which makes him extremely tanky. You automatically get snapshot at level nine. So you can already tell this is a build where you're meant to really almost be an off tank right in front with all the other frontliners and just hitting enemies with attacks of opportunity with your bow. Very, very great class. Again, like I said, I already have the build video out for that, so you can go through that if you want to see more of the uh, details. But as far as like a secondary um, subclass that I also really enjoy from Monk, again, I'll probably never play it, but 
quarterstaff master is just is really interesting to me only because every time i think of monk i always think of unarmed attacks so to have a subclass that actually specializes in a monk holding a weapon that's not ranged is interesting and i feel like that's something i might be willing to check out but there are so many other amazing classes and subclasses in this game that i know i'm never going to get get to it um so that's really all i have to say about monk like i said it seems like everybody who does build videos leans on monk heavily and i just don't want to be that guy next up is oracle and out of all the subclasses i am most excited about purifier what I really, really love about Purifier is the ability you get at level eight, which allows you as a full round action to touch a party member and then consume a curse, enchantment, or emotion effect. Some of those emotion effects especially are extremely difficult to remove. And it seems like with this Sin Eater uh, ability, the Purifier is able to take care of them a lot easier than other standard cleric classes are able to do. So that really, really appeals to me. In general, oracles are a very, very strong class, great healers. A purifier matches up very nicely with angel, is going to increase the efficacy of your heals while also giving you some holy damage abilities. Just really, really strong stuff. I could easily see myself, if I was going to play like a, a, a main healer build for a particular party, this is absolutely something that I would choose. If I was going to choose a follow-up subclass, I'd probably go with Wind Whisperer. Again, I'm trying to find a subclass that's really, really great with lightning attacks that I can use throughout the game. So as Wind Whisperer, you are going to have to choose the wind mystery and then it's automatically going to give you lightning storm and lightning bolts and storm bolts rather along with the summon and winds of vengeance so i'd probably have to find an item or something that would give me chain lightning to throw into here but it looks like it's a nice way to be able to do some lightning damage while at the same time have healing and you get a couple of other cool things with it uh starting at seventh level as a swift action you can affect all allies in a 30-foot radius with the haste spell for a number of rounds equal to the charisma modifier. Not spectacular, but interesting. It's something cool to have. And then you can do the a similar thing, again, as a swift action where you're going to give everybody in a 30-foot radius the freedom of movement spell, which can be useful in those situations. They're rare, but there are definitely some boss characters in this game that will lay down a difficult terrain type of spell and being able to give your entire party freedom of movement with one click is can actually uh, have some uses. So uh, this definitely seems cool. Again, I prefer Purifier, but if I was gonna choose a backup subclass, that would probably be it. Next up is Paladin. And my favorite subclass out of all the ones available, without a shadow of a doubt, Stone Lord. You've got to be a dwarf if you want to take this, but man, man, you get some monster, monster, defensive boost when you take this class. I'll just read the final level ones. Uh, stone Strike, once per day per Paladin level, a Stone Lord can draw upon the power of the Living Rock, treats her melee attacks until the beginning of her next turn as magical and adamantine with a plus one bonus on attack and damage rolls. This increases over time. So by, the, by this time, it's a plus five on both attack and damage rolls. A Stone Lord's body transforms into living stone. She no longer needs to eat, drink, breathe, or sleep, and she becomes immune to paralysis, poison, and stunning. She also becomes immune to critical, critical hits and precision damage. Wow, that is bananas. <laughs> Absolutely bananas. And then you're also going to automatically pick up the ability to take certain defensive buffs while you are going through the game. Just really, really, really cool stuff. And I like that it's specific to the dwarves, that it's got some lore behind it. I would love to go through the game at the, as this class. I'm going through as an Aeon right now, and it was honestly a real struggle for me deciding whether I was going to be a Stone Lord or if I was going to be the Inquisitor Summoner. But I finally went on ahead with the Summoner just because I haven't really tried being a summoning class in Pathfinder yet. If I was going to choose a follow-up, 
I'm actually really looking forward to going through the game as a martyr. That's what I plan to do when I am a gold dragon. Not so much for the mechanics. It's basically a paladin mixed with a bard, which is cool. It's going to be interesting, but I don't like that you lose out on all the smite evils. You lose out on the auras. You lose out on some of the things that are really, really great about the paladin. But I feel like from a lore and role playing perspective, this fits in perfectly with what I envision my golden dragon playthrough being like. Every paladin's code instructs him to put the welfare of others before his own. But some paladins take this farther than most, shouldering the direct suffering of the world onto themselves in order to help others and inspiring their allies to achieve heights of valor rather than seeking the glory for themselves. That to me is, sounds like Gold Dragon. Absolutely. So uh, when I finally do my Gold Dragon playthrough, this is definitely the class that I'm going to choose. And I'm really looking forward to doing that. Um, and as you could probably already guess, as far as Mythic Pass the Stone Lord, I would mess that with, um, with the Aeon. But of course, you're a Paladin, so Angel would fit very well into this as well. Next up is Ranger. And honestly, the only subclass that I'm really a fan of for Ranger is Demon Slayer. The specific reason why. I really like Ranger in Kingmaker. But in this particular game, so sorry, first of all, one of the real claims to fame for Ranger is favorite enemy, right? Where you pick a particular type of enemy and then you get a bunch of great buffs against that particular type of enemy. Well, in Wrath of the Righteous, Alcat changed how favorite enemy worked specifically for demons. So as opposed to just being able to select demon and level that up every single time, now there are three different categories of demons. You've got demons of magic, demons of slaughter, demons of strength. There's nothing in the game that really tells you what each type, what category each type of enemy falls under. You have to, you would have to actually get to that enemy and then inspect them and look through them to try to find out, oh, okay, well, this is the category they'll belong under. So let's say you pick this class right at the beginning of the game and you know, okay, I want to pick the perfect person that will just absolutely annihilate Descari when I get to him. Well, there's no way for you to know which one of these Descari actually falls under. And so I don't particularly like the Ranger class because I feel like favorite enemy is frankly kind of garbage. <laughs> it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work nearly as well as it worked in Kingmaker. The only subclass where I don't feel that way is Demon Slayer because Demon's, uh, Demon Slayer's claim to fame is it X's out favorite enemy and instead says, hey, you must choose favorite enemy evil outsider and then you're automatically get going to get some additional bonuses against those particular type of creatures as well. So it kind of takes the hand wringing out of it and just says, this is what you're an expert in. You slay demons, that's your thing. And you don't have to worry about the rest of it. All the other classes I feel like have drawbacks in, in some way and they just really... They don't appeal to me, but Demon Slayer is definitely something I'd be willing to go with. As far as what Mythic Path works well with Demon Slayer, um, I don't feel like it necessarily folds well into any particular class. You do get a ton of class skills with it, but your caster ability is wisdom. So it's not like you're going to be pumping up intelligence sky high with this particular class. So you could do Trickster. Um, but honestly, from a role-playing perspective, I don't feel like that works. You're supposed to be a demon slayer. Trickster doesn't care about what it works with, so you could be aligned with all sorts of evil creatures. Azada, of course, is always a strong choice. Basically, with this one, you can kind of mesh it with whatever it is you want to based upon your own particular playstyle. Next up is Rogue. Uh, quick note before we get into the subclasses, I absolutely love Eldritch Scoundrel. But I take Wolgeth in my party all the time. I'm pretty familiar with the subclass by now. And so I would never play it myself. So I don't see it as something that I would list as my favorite. But, you know, any, for anybody that's curious, I do have a uh, Wolgeth build out where he mainly goes through this subclass. And I think it's absolutely uh, fantastic if you like that rogue mixed with a uh, wizard type of setup. But as far as the subclass that I would personally play myself, 
Uh, first and foremost, I'm really interested in Knight Master. I'm interested in Knight Master because I've always wanted to go through the game completely depending on cookeries, but I did not want to have to take that exotic weapon feat. And Knife Master allows you to basically pick those up right from the very beginning and do a ton of damage with them. So I really, really, I'm really, really interested in this particular class. You obviously get a ton of sneak attack damage. I think it would mesh perfectly with Trickster. You get a ton of class skills so you can decide which ones you want to specialize in. Definitely, definitely something that I could see myself going into. As far as my secondary um, subclass that I really enjoy, this one is more so based around my lack of knowledge, but I wanna go into Rowdy. I specifically wanna go into Rowdy because it's based around Vital Strike, where you're automatically gonna get um, Vital Strike, Improved Vital Strike, and then finally Greater Vital Strike. And I don't know if it's a bug or if it's a lack of my own understanding, but I've just had multiple times where either I had a character with Vital Strike or somebody else had a character with Vital Strike and they made a comment on my channel and we're looking at the damage numbers and have no idea what the hell is going on. Like you do a ton of damage, but it doesn't seem like based upon the description of this ability that the damage should be what I'm seeing. So I want to be able to play as a class where it really specializes in that and I go through the whole game with it so that hopefully by the time I reach level 20 or hopefully earlier, I have a firm grasp on what this really does and I feel much more comfortable saying this is a great ability to have or no, it doesn't make any sense or no, there's a bunch of things that are bugged with it and as soon as they fix those bugs, the skill is probably gonna be nerfed to hell. And so off of that, I really, really wanna go through the game as a rowdy rogue. All right, I don't want this video to be crazy long, so I think we'll stop it there. Hope all of you enjoyed the video today. If you did, please leave me a like down below, share this content, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.